Are you ready to stop applying to hundreds of jobs per week on LinkedIn and start seeing real results in your job search? In this video, I'm gonna give you practical advice, steps to be able to see real transformative results as you approach your strategic job search. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and you'll be notified every time I release a brand new video just like this one. My name's Ryan Stoltzfus. I'm the CEO and founder of the Job Hackers Network. Here, we help leaders to be able to build their brand and grow their impact. So today, we're gonna discuss three things that are gonna help you to get away from LinkedIn applications and do the work that's actually gonna matter. And the third one is a golden bullet. Stick around and make sure you watch that third one. All right, number one, always apply to the job on the company career page, not on LinkedIn. Why? Let's look at three reasons why that's gonna help you with your results. Number one, the role on LinkedIn might be a filler rec. What the heck is a filler rec, Ryan? All right, I see this done over and over and over again. Essentially, a filler rec is BS. What a filler rec is, is something that's simply floating out there to gather applicants. We may need them in the future, right? It's not a, it's not a real rec, it's, it's a bucket that they're hoping that really amazing candidates are just gonna fall into. But here's the deal, nobody's looking at it. It doesn't even matter if an amazing person falls into there, they don't have a job for you now. And so it's a filler rec. Go over to their career website, search for that rec by title, by city, see if it actually is as it's posted on LinkedIn. Okay, number one, make sure it's not a filler rec. Number two, it could be a ghost rec. What the heck is a ghost rec? It's fake in this way. At one point it was real, right? A recruiter needed to fill that rec, but then they did and they left it up because here's the deal. On the company website, they're gonna keep that up to date. When they have their final candidates, when they don't wanna keep receiving people, they're gonna close that requisition in their internal system. But they're not gonna go to the 15 other places that that rec was posted and physically close it there. These recruiters are working on the low side, 25 requisitions, on the normal side, 30 to 45 requisitions, and I've seen it be as high as 200 at one time. Can you imagine having 200 recs and having 2,000 people apply to every single one of those requisitions? That individual is not looking at all of those. Okay, so. That's talking about the workload. That's part of why you're not getting responses back. But they could have already had the final candidates. They close it on their internal system. You go to that career website, you find out, hey, it's not even posted here anymore. And that's the place that you need to be applying to it. So then you back off and you go find other things because it is a ghost wreck. They have already filled it. All right, so that's number two. Might be a ghost wreck. Number three, while you shouldn't be applying on LinkedIn, go over to that careers page, apply to the job there if it actually is able to be found, because then you're gonna assure that you're getting your information into the internal company's system. You ensure that they at least have the ability to see it. As you apply on LinkedIn or Indeed or any other place, it's a third party. They have to transfer the information over, and it doesn't always fill all the fields in the internal career application. And when you have an incomplete application, it's not gonna get seen. If you have an issue with that information being transferred over, it's not gonna be seen. So assure that you're going to the careers page, filling out all of the form fields. Yes, you do have to fill out all the form fields. Have a complete application, and that gives you a higher likelihood of getting seen. If you're applying to a job and you need to polish up your professional resume, I'm gonna link a video here. I'm gonna put it down below in the description so that you can understand best practices to be able to get that professional resume drilled in to get your value proposition, your career stories absolutely drilled in so that it is easy to see and understand you. And again, increase probability of you getting the job. That's what this is all about. Now, number two in this process is gonna to be to research the company and research the people. Now, three steps in this that are gonna help you to be seen. Number one, you wanna research the people to understand who do you think is the most likely to have control over this role. It might be the direct hiring manager or it might be somebody else in a peripheral or lateral field with similar titling. If you're going after director of engineering, you wanna find those VPs of engineering. If you're going after something in Minneapolis, you wanna find that VP of engineering in Minneapolis. Now, there isn't one. So then expand out to the United States and hit up those VPs of engineering. 
If they're hiring for director of engineering in one city, they're probably hiring in other cities that have that same need. You want to get to these individuals, and this is going to get us into number two. Find other leaders as well that are going to be affected by this work. Okay, here's what I mean by this. You're going after a director of engineering role. The director of operations, more, you know, even better, the VP of operations, that PL owner, might be affected by the work that this director of engineering is doing. So now you have this list of other individuals who are affected, influenced. The work that this director of engineering is doing is going to enable them to better deliver in their space. Okay, so look at those peripheral roles that are one to two layers up. Because in step number three, you're going to communicate with all these people. Send out messages with your drilled in value proposition. Some people call it an elevator pitch. I like value proposition because you need to deliver value. And then you need to stack that value. You need to show the individuals that probably have center of control over this role and the individuals that have maybe it, it is influencing their work that you are going to be able to solve problems that you are going to be able to go after pain points, things that you've identified as you've looked at the requisition, as you've looked at the job search site, the careers site on their website, as you've researched more, understood more about what they're trying to accomplish right now from a product perspective or whatever it is that your specific role is going to affect. And then you know yourself and you know that you step forward in a certain way in a certain life cycle of the business to move things forward deliver that communication to these individuals and ask for their time. Ask for their time, network with them, have conversations. That is what you're going for in the job search and that is what gets it done. Conversations. Not with recruiters through the standard process. Yes, hack the system. Go directly to the individuals that are likely to be filling this role, but others that are gonna be influenced by having an amazing strong candidate Grab with intrigue their attention with a strong value proposition and say, hey, I think it's worth our time to have a quick conversation and then set up those conversations. So that's number two. You're going to research the company and you're going to research the people and then you're going to reach out and get eyes on you. Are you ready to start or optimize your job search process? Do you feel stuck and need help connecting the dots? Join this free web class where you'll learn the step-by-step -step formula to control your career progression. We've helped hundreds of experienced engineering and operations leaders just like you to build their brand and grow their impact. Register for this exclusive training today to step into the driver's seat of your career. If this is helping you, then smash that like button down below and then pop into the comments and answer this question. How many job search applications have you been sending out each week? Number three, this is a golden bullet, as I said before, a golden nugget. You know that this company that you found a rec for is looking to solve a problem. Well, their competitors are too. So figure out then from a research perspective, dive into ChatGPT and ask what are the main core competitors to this organization and then go to those competitors because they are also trying to solve the, pain, the same problems that this organization is trying to solve with the filling of this role. So the problems that are in your center of control and center of influence. You wanna find those competitors, make a list, and then we're gonna walk into three components that you can do with this competitor list. The first thing that you wanna do with that list is you wanna research them company by company to figure out who are those individuals that have the role above the one that you're looking to attain, maybe even skip level two roles above. These are the individuals that would hold the purse strings to be able to create the role that you would want in these competitors. These are the individuals that have the direct ownership of the problems that you can solve. Number two is you want to network with those individuals, each individual sending them your value proposition directly via LinkedIn, via email, go towards those individuals and say, I understand that there is a problem here in this organization as a competitor to that organization. I believe you're probably trying to solve the same issue and then present your value proposition, strike intrigue and get to the conversation. The third step in step three is you want to meet with those individuals and ask them who else should you be talking to? So what you're doing here is you're having the conversation with hiring managers, right? You are controlling your job search process. 
and you are networking and you are expanding out your web by asking, who else would I have a great conversation with? You're not asking who else has a job, who else, that's too high of an ask. You're simply asking who else should I be talking to? Who else would I have a great conversation with? Low barrier to entry, this is where you're gonna get names, internal to that company and sometimes external to that company. And this starts those feelers out, this starts that network out, and networking is where 85% of these leadership level roles are getting filled. The data clearly shows us that, and this is where you need to play. Now, if you want a step-by-step, -step, if you love process, and you want to know the steps to be able to get to the table consistently with hiring leaders, then join my free training to unleash your career. I will give you that step-by-step -step guide. You're going to find a link to that training in the description below. Now, be sure to check out these videos above that are going to enable you to continue to build your brand so that you ultimately can do what you want to do, grow your impact. I'll see you on the next one.